Welcome, everybody, and uh, to this special edition of the uh, Bandwagon Podcast. Um, today joining me is one of the original originators, I would say, in the Desi space of uh, of, uh, of podcasting. Um, he runs the SMT uh, podcast. It's uh, Satman. It's, it's fantastic to be out. You know, I, I always love to jump on any bandwagon that's uh, <laughs> going on. So uh, I'm happy to be here. Uh, and thanks for asking me. No, I think it was really important, especially... Um, if you if you look at the kind of uh, this new space that people are operating in and uh, and podcasting is, uh, I think the etiquette is one of the things that you learn is that you 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 share and you help and you grow to, together collectively. One of the, those kind of things are, are not really common in, in, in the Desi sphere of, of helping each other out. Really, it's always no. kind of a, this uh, one upman uh, ship, you know, this this competition thing as well. So. I think it's really important that, you know, those traditions of trying to help people and moving people on still continue. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I used to think that, I, I don't know if it's just contained within the Desi community. Obviously we're, we're affected by it a lot more, me and you, because we're in yeah. that community and uh, it does feel like um, the gatekeepers have kind of lost some of their control. You know, mm. I, I, I've worked in radio before previously and, even in music, slight, uh, you know, and uh, there was always a gatekeeper. You always had to get through someone to mm. to get your voice out there, and it, it was hard unless you had a, a name or some kind of track record behind you. It's very difficult to get through them doors. And uh, I think just podcasting and being online, it's just blown them uh, uh, barriers away, right? So it's really down to yourself and uh, your passion and hard work really how far you want to take it i mean it still happens now obviously yeah. um you, you probably notice we've been podcasting uh even i get it and i've been going on since what 2015 mm. um when i ask some people to come on they're not sure they want to know how many downloads you get and who's going to listen and can i listen to it first uh, and then sort of give you the go ahead and and it's it's a no <laughs> You can't listen to it, right? It's just a yeah. conversation, and uh, uh, because it's hard work, right? You don't want to mm. record a whole interview and then for them to say, you know, can you cut that bit out where I said, you know, this, this, and this, and um, I don't know how you work, but I, I, I don't like editing much at all. Yeah, I actually find uh, editing uh, really cathartic. Um, I, I, I quite enjoy that process. I think the only bit which I, I hate is uh, and un it's the kind of the unfortunate side of it is the whole social media aspect of it you know just keeping it um you know ma making it look this way y you're limited on resources you, you know some of those bigger podcasts that you that we, you know that you're looking at uh, i mean the easiest ones are like joe rogan and, and a few of the other ones you, you know they've got teams of, of people working alongside it uh to get to get all that content out and i think if you're you know, I only could talk from myself is, is it's literally just me just just doing it and getting into that kind of rhythm and so when I get into the editing process I think I quite enjoy uh, um, you know hearing other people I hate hearing myself um, but you know especially when you could sometimes you can see when people are thinking about certain topics or their opinion on something you follow their thought you can actually see that you know the whole thought pattern but I think something that you, you know you, how, how you've done it is, is, especially when you started out um, you know sorry not starting out but what you see now is like you know you there is a standard you know this this is a minimum standard what you should be done it's not like how I think so, some dangers of podcasts are where they'll be like, yeah, I'm in a really good WhatsApp group with about a few lads. Let's just get around the table and, you know, just convince, convey that into, into a podcast. I, it's just, I think that you, you, you won't last long. No, no, because it's a bit like going to a bar, right, with friends and you're the designated driver. Yeah. Um, the first hour was quite fun, but as they get more and more drunk, um, they're really only interested in their own conversations and the person listening is just thinking <laughs> it was quite funny before, but now I've kind of, uh, it needs to have some element of structure to yeah. what you're doing. Uh, it's difficult with podcasting. It, it, it is slightly raw and uncut, you know, compared to say radio, which is uh, a bit more polished. Um, but yeah, 
it's a difficult one because I think as more and more bigger brands get involved, I mean, radio stations now make their own podcasts. I think we spoke about this a little bit uh, mm. offline and mm. uh, which I understand why they're doing it. It's more content, but it's not in the essence of a pure podcast. I don't think it is one. Right. And yeah, um, it's literally clips from their radio show stuck together to make a podcast. Right. And because they think they should have a podcast. And I, in 20. 2014 is when I started creating the, uh, the British Asian podcast because mm. I used to listen to Joe Rogan, like you mentioned, yeah. another guy, Mark Maron. Uh, I was a big fan of Mark Maron's because he used to interview, I don't know if you've listened to his stuff, WTF. He used to interview comedians and uh, actors, but he was going through a lot of problems himself where he used to, he wanted to get onto Saturday Night uh, Live um, a comedy show and he couldn't for whatever reason. He used to talk about that at the beginning of his shows and I thought, this is fantastic. There's no music interludes in it. You know, when you really get into the conversation, it doesn't break yeah. off for the news. Or, And I really got into it. And I thought, you know what? I, I'd love to do a podcast and get some people on there that I like, you know. And uh, that's kind of the genesis of it at the beginning of 2014. And it was just fear of doing it. It took me till March, March or April 2015 yeah. to finally release the first episode and um it what was, was just the, what was the fears then you like you mentioned it like the, I, I suppose at that time it, it, you, you know, I, I mean i don't know any of the destiny ones who would have been doing it at that time but like what was some of the fears that you were kind of going through then it was look there's a lot of fears actually because one can i even do this yeah am i gonna you know c- can i actually pull this off and put a podcast out there and then it's the thing of People are going to think oh, I'm stupid. Why, you know, I'm not a professional interviewer by any stretch. I'm not being trained by the BBC. And am I going to get anyone to even come on the show? Mm. Because that that barrier of telling people, do you want to come on my podcast? Was what's a podcast? Yeah. <laughs> and um, and it, it, it and eventually I used to say it's online radio. I just gave up and said, yeah, it's like an online radio show, right? <laughs> come on. And it, it it was a fear of what other people would think. And it's such a stupid thing looking back at it. Obviously, I've got a bit more experience in it now. But yeah. at the time, it's always about what do other people think? Hmm. And uh, I I just thought people were going to think, who does this guy think he is? He's not a presenter. You know, he's got this show out. And it's one of the reasons, Ricky, that I... The show was originally going to be called the SMT, Satman Talks podcast. Yeah. And because of the fear of ego and people thinking oh look at him um i called it the british asian podcast for that reason right because then i thought it's more generic and people kind of it kind of worked out well but that's one of the reasons why it was called british asian podcast rather than the smt which was the original domains i'd brought and uh, uh logos i'd created um it, it it's that judgment right on especially online we live in an online world and if you think if you look at things like instagram you know uh, and i'm guilty of it as much as anyone else yeah uh you take a picture of yourself you might take a couple right two three and think i don't know about that one i'll do this one i'll maybe i'll highlight uh bring up the highlights in this one maybe put a bit of a filter on this one you want you you try to portray the best aspects of yourself right yeah yeah you know not the worst but the best so your instagram feed is a highlights reel of the best parts of your life and not so much the sort of tough times and uh, the, the days when you are looking a bit shit, you know, and you feel a bit tired and mm. your bags under your eyes and, you know, and we kind of, we're moving away from that. And I kind of sometimes think, you know, the, the image we try to put out to people is, uh, it's never the real thing. It never really is right and uh and that's i think with podcasting because it is my voice asking people questions and i i used to ask quite personal questions yeah. in my own way in a conversation i used to put a lot of myself out there as well i used to talk about my past of drinking and drugs sometimes both at the same time and uh, we'll get to that to, <laughs> yeah that's, that's a great bit yeah, yeah. So don't go anywhere guys but, and, <laughs> yeah. uh, um, I used because I felt if I'm asking these personal questions uh, of my guest, 
I should be open enough to talk about mm. it as well. You know, it's, it's not a one way, uh, one way conversation here, right? I don't want to just get things out of people. I want to say, look, I want to be open. And I remember doing that in my first few interviews with people and they were kind of taken back. I don't, because they'd never been interviewed in that way yeah. where I was sort of telling them quite personal things actually. Um, and uh, when you do talk about your own personal life experiences, then it's very hard editing it. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're listening back and I think, oh my God, I can't believe I told them that or I spoke about that. And it's very, it's very tempting to cut them bits out. Yeah. But I didn't. And I thought, you know what, I'm just going to put it out there. Let's see what happens. And I think it was at that time, there wasn't many. There was a couple. There was one in Canada that was kind of music based. Yeah. And they had songs on there. And we're kind of friends now, me, me and that guy, DJ Reminis. And uh, I used to say to him, look, mate, you've got to take your songs off your podcast. You're going to get pulled off because it's copyright law, right? He goes, no, yeah. that's fine. I'll be doing it. I go, well, they can, they can take you off, right? But anyway, um, he was around. But yeah, more I, music. I remember seeing, I mean, like, I, I remember when he was doing it, he was kind of like reviewing songs at that That's stage, it. wasn't he? And then yeah. I think he started getting quite a lot of grief uh, from like, I think even some of the artists themselves, especially if it was a uh, low score in them as well. Yeah, I mean, criticism within the, the Asian community, it doesn't work, you know, we can't, was, yeah. you can't be critics, can you, of something? You know, I understand where the artists are coming from and put a lot of time and effort into things. And for then someone to say, you know, uh, this, this is not that good, or I don't like this, or I'm not feeling this, you know, it hurts, right? But we need a bit of criticism, and I, it, it does help, constructive at least. If people are saying, yeah, you shit, you know, who do you think you are? That, I mean, I'll just ignore them, really. I, I, mean, I, had, I, had my I had my first bit of that, actually. Um, yeah. It was uh, my poor. <laughs> I, I said, uh, so my, my, my uh, youngest... Um, He's three. He, he, I think he was just shouting or something like that. Some uh, podcast. I don't know. He said something. I said, "What? Um, have you been? Have you watched any of the podcast?" She goes, "Yeah, I saw one. The other, they were, they're just boring." And she is deadly direct in it. You know, like to put it up in there. And I was like, "I said, do you know what the understanding of a podcast is?" And, and she's like, mm. uh, "And I said, I go. In essence, that's the kind of mind shift of getting people to." be comfortable it's a long format conversation because just going back a little bit what you were saying I think I was a little bit similar when like talk sport when it first came out there was no music or anything I just wanted to listen to people's opinions and then gradually as adverts started kicking in I was just found myself kind of like switching off and then I was watching like a lot of stuff on uh, YouTube then the adverts started kicking in again I start switching off so if I can get that pure unadulterated kind of long format I love it but then that criticism bit when it comes in, oh, it's just so easy to say, like, um, you know, it's, uh, we're thick skinned or anything like that. But sometimes you just, you hear an off comment or you see an off comment and it just really fucking winds you up. Yeah, it does. It, it, it does really hit deep regardless, mm -hmm. even if it's just a comment on Facebook or yeah. Twitter or whatever. I had, a, I had one recently actually on YouTube mm. about someone asked, said um yeah uh, this is a good show but you know you should have asked this person this and this and you never asked them about their group their beef they had with rdb mm. and um something like that right and uh first i was a bit like Ugh. ignore and tempted to even delete mm. you know um and to be honest i I thought, yeah, maybe I could have asked them about RDB and their sort of uh, problems they had regarding their music. But then the conversation is the conversation, right? If it kind of yeah. came up naturally, I, I, I probably would have. But I didn't really, um, didn't come out, you know, and I don't, I'm not there but to you go to, it, it is one for that, sorry. Is it hard then to kind of like, do you feel that people think that you're going in to try and get gossip or is yeah. it or is it and they don't really believe you if you're trying to go in for a conversation 100 percent, yeah because they i think people are um tuned into a certain type of interview they mm. grew up listening to a certain type of interview especially when you listen, talk to people in the music industry they come on and they want to talk about their latest album Mm. and uh or their latest projects or single whatever right and i'm not always 
that interested in that part. <laughs> right? And um, so I try to navigate my way around it, but obviously still talk about, that's why they're there. I know it's a game. You have to talk about things like that. But, and I think some people found it difficult. They they were a bit like, oh, um, What's the that after? was a, yeah, this is a weird sort of interview. People, I used to get that a lot at the beginnings. I never really seemed just like a conversation with talking down the pub and stuff like this. And uh, it's because it wasn't, I didn't do that on purpose. I just didn't know another way to do yeah, it. Yeah, I, yeah. I wasn't trained in a way to do a structured interview. Yeah. You know, and I kind of just thought, I'm just going to talk to him and see what, do you, how it comes Do up. you structure your interviews now? Like, or do you no. just go off the floor? Yeah, I'm exactly, I don't. Yeah. I don't structure them. I, well, at the beginning, the first couple of, interviews my first ever interview was with tan desi mp for Slap. yeah yeah because he's a gravesend guy i'm from gravesend mm. originally and uh i thought i'm gonna ask and he wasn't an mp then he, he was a wannabe mp right <laughs> and, uh, i said so uh, the good old days yeah the good day when he was a wannabe i wonder what happened to him eh? yeah, right and yeah. uh i called him around my house we had a my mum made some tea i remember this and i i said we're just gonna do an interview see about your life and this that and the other and I had a bit of a structure then. I thought, I'll ask him about his childhood, mm. sort of what he's doing now and his future plans. That was it. That was what I was going to do. And I think within about 10 minutes, I'd completely forgotten about the structure and we just got into a conversation. And and then I started to think to myself, like, like me and you, Ricky, we're having a conversation or we have a conversation. Anyone in our life, we don't have a structure, do we? Oh, we just no. Unless you've got a meeting, a work meeting or something. But really, you can... We know how to talk to people, don't we? Mm. We do it all the times in our life, you know. And I think probably the, uh, the slight skill is a stranger. Some people are not confident to talk to strangers uh, that they're not, they don't know that well. So I know I don't do no structure. I, you know, I shouldn't really say this, but I don't do much research mm. of people unless they've got a book. I mean, I had a few authors on, and I haven't. I'll be honest, I haven't read all their book. I must have yeah. read a few chapters at least to get an idea, but. I don't do enough probably, uh, but I don't, I don't have enough time, you know, and uh, yeah. it seems to work out all right at the end. I mean, they still talk to me. Yeah. I think if you've got that kind of style in terms of where you, you're more open and you're able to kind of speak to someone, it, it's really kind of, it, it really kind of sharpens a lot of your own skills, especially kind of like, like listening, you know, you're really attentive and I, and with the greatest of respect, I think when, when people talk to each other, they don't really necessarily listen that well. No. They, they normally pick out key words or little key parts. So sometimes I'll come out, of, like if I've recorded something, I'm absolutely shattered because I've really just been concentrating on every kind of word and making sure that they feel engaged. If I know I, if I'm engaged, I know that they will, you know, kind of reciprocate that. Um, yeah. But I think if you go in with a particular agenda, I think people can call you, you know, they, they can see you asking, you know, leading kind of questions are going down there from that gossip. But I think, I think I kind kind of like actively go, go away from, go, for, go away from same that. Here. Yeah, did you, same here. So did you, when you, when you did you, after you, your first one, um, did you kind of like, when would you say you saw significant changes in your style or, or, or your kind of le- your uh, development uh, uh, from your first podcast? So I would say it was about, Four, four or five episodes in that had mm. been released and a few people that had been on and also people listening said, oh, I love your interview style, right? And in my head, I was thinking, I, don't, I haven't got an interview style. I'm just yeah. talking to people. But people started thinking this is my interview style. I'd kind of created this sort of mm. way of, but I didn't at all. It was just me talking, right? And uh, if you listen, you're a podcast listener, you know, there's not a style is there Joe Rogan no. doesn't have a style he just talks and uh, some of the other ones as well and that's I, I then I thought okay I'm going to sort of play into this a little bit I'm just gonna off the cuff and not do much research and get to know the person as I'm doing the the actual podcast and to make it as natural as possible and whatever comes out in the conversation comes out if I miss certain key bits that's fine it happens right and yeah. it's just a, a ca- a moment in time a conversation in time you know and it's been recorded and it's there prosperity right and that's what we were discussing at that time you know mm. um so i think about five or six episodes in i thought i'm just going to do it like this and it was so much easier <laughs> less work to do right i just yeah. turn up and uh i mean the early days i used to travel around before covid 
Yeah. Uh, Pre-COVID, I used to actually travel around meeting people with my little uh, digital recorder, two microphones, and there's no videos or anything like that. And uh, I remember that was a lot of work. I, I couldn't imagine doing that now, actually, driving up to Birmingham and Glasgow. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think it like a, a, you, you've seen a lot? Of, I think unless you, it comes down to budgets and resources as well, doesn't it? It's like if you if you've got the ability to go and do that, and uh, I think a lot of the, the the listening world, the audience have become more familiar with. Um, uh with zoom content and the way how things are being recorded um do you think you'll ever go back into meeting people face to face again you know uh yes i, I will mm. i will but i think this zoom it, it works mm. because i i i remember it was dips Bamra came on the smt he came on the first one as well and, and the smt and i said mm, i don't like this zoom business right he goes look he goes, if it works for Sky Sports and the BBC and news channels, he goes, surely it can work for you. And then I thought, yeah, it's a good point, actually, yeah. because they're all doing it, right? I'm just doing a podcast at home, yeah. right? And so if it's good enough for them, for national mainstream media, you know, they're doing it now. BBC is still doing it. They're into, you know, <laughs> um, you know, even the, uh, the briefings, uh, the government briefings that they have for COVID, you know, they yeah. get questions from um journalists on zoom don't they so i w th there's something i don't know if you've, you've done any but that that conversation having with someone in a room together in a place that environment there, there, there's actually a, a there's a vibe within people when you're sitting with them that you really pick up more in person and um zoom's good it works but i i my, my aim was before covid it was to get a little studio yeah place in birmingham i wanted it sort of central one in london hopefully and then sort of uh set up a little place where you come in and chat and uh that was the aim but obviously mm -hmm. covid sort of put that and then i started doing the zoom ones i thought i'll give it a go and um it kind of works the technology works my aim was always i was a bit of an audio snob at the beginning mm. it's got to sound good video's got to be good um and i gave it a go and it works the sound was good it works doesn't it at the moment and the video part was after about 15 20 shows someone said to me why don't you put your videos out from zoom mm. i was like nah I'm, I'm a i'm a pure podcast audio yeah, yeah, yeah. right i'm an I'm, 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 you know purist an old, yeah i'm a purist like them um, analog photographers <laughs> still shooting film right but uh but then I thought, I've got the videos. Let's see if I put some out on YouTube. Because I'm not a YouTube guy at yeah. all. I hate that part. Honestly, I hate editing the, the videos because it's big files. It's a pain. And I'm not and I'm not an expert at videos, right? And um, I, I did it. And people liked it. Some people watch on YouTube, not loads. More people listen audio. But yeah. I suppose this is the kind of world we're in. People want different types of content. Some people like watching it. You know, I think I've never... I've never watched a Joe or listened to a Joe Rogan podcast on YouTube. Mm. It's always been audio and now on Spotify. I always, I always look at it depending on the guest who, who, who he's got on. Um, because if it's somebody who I know is more visual or when it, or this kind of like that visual content, um, then I, I, I do, but I do find since going over to Spotify, um, I listen, I, I do listen to it a, uh, a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But it's interesting how, Spotify had his after he signed. He's like the first kind of video content as well to go alongside it. I, I wonder if Spotify are going to do that with for regular regular podcasters and what what that process might look like. It, it could do. I could do. I'm always interested when um, big companies buy. You know, although Joe Rogan's not a small podcast by any means, mm. it's probably the biggest. Uh, but they they kind of take over, don't they? These big companies. They swallow yeah. them up within their brand, you know, and that sort of um, indie, you know, uh, podcaster, um, you know, if you're good, they'll take you and they'll, they'll. I mean, Joe Rogan's got a great con contract out here. He's got a lot of money, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I think you can afford a mixie or two, yeah? Yeah, exactly, right? So, but for a young person who's starting up, who does pretty well, um, they, they, would, they would sign them up, right? And, they would just 
that contract won't be in their benefit without doubt, mm. you know, uh, long term because they won't own their own. I'm sure Joe Rogan still owns his own um, masters of his podcasts. I'm sure he's, you know, he could stipulate that. But you I know. think I feel from the deal that I was uh, that I read from that he licenses it. So after yeah. the, after his Spotify contract goes up, um, he'll he'll own his stuff back. So they're they're literally just renting him. Oh, that sounds terrible. Uh, yeah. He, yeah, he's a rent. He's a rent boy. He's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's uh he's definitely got that in his locker, um, yeah. and then he's. I wouldn't be surprised after all of this, after this whole Spotify, that he goes back to YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can I, def, I can definitely see that because just as much as the way I'm not saying it's common, but we might get abuse in our comments. I think they built. Um, this whole community of where the people will talk about it, you know, that particular episode. So like that doesn't exist on Spotify. You don't have that communal, you know, that, that, that he's got fans and stuff to do it, that they're able to talk. Whereas it, it's non-existent on, on, on Spotify. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's exactly. So he could go back, but I want to, well, I think what I'm saying is that he has the power, right. To yeah. kind of change his contracts, but for someone young, when you've got big media corporations, buying out these little guys and you know that there's an element of control and I think with podcasting for me why I like it is it's always been about control for me yeah, yeah. I can control who I interview yeah when I do when it when I do it yeah yeah um What's what that? Like, you've think? got you've got like obviously you've been you started out fairly early on uh, fairly early on you've got um you know it's kind of like a rev- revolutionary in, in that aspect why didn't the likes of, or did they, uh, hopefully you can confirm or deny, did the, like someone like the BBC Asia Network or anything else, did they approach you? Did you ever have discussions about it at all? I, I spoke to a few radio stations. One actually asked if they could use my podcasts. Um, not like a deal like Joe Rogan. Yeah, yeah. They just wanted them, right? And uh, I said... I was thinking that I could do, but then I said no, because it's, you know, on a podcast, you can swear and mm. some of the topics we talk about, you know, it's not, it's not for public consumption on, a, you know, broadcasting rules. Yeah. Right. So I, and then I thought I'm sort of tied down to making a show all the time for them. Yeah. And I didn't want that. And recently with the SMT, someone asked me, they said, Oh, we've got a radio station. There's online radio stations now, isn't there? There's one in Canada. Yeah. I see them pop up here and there. I don't, that's not really my thing. I don't want, to go on the BBC mm. because I know I've worked for radio stations and I know directors of radio stations want things a certain way. They may want you to interview a certain person not and not a certain person. They don't, you know, it's that freedom will go whoever I go with, if I ever did, but I, I just like the sort of independence of it. Mm. And um, there's been times when people have asked, Last week, someone asked me to do some interviews. Um, I've kind of, I'm always tempted. I'm a bit uh, impetuous like that. I was like, yeah, that sounds brilliant. And then I'll sit back at home on my own and think, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, I'll make, I'll make a quick rash decision. And then a week later, I'll say no. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I think, no, it's just, I've always, I just, I just find it interesting in, in, in terms of how, Sometimes the radio stations, especially in the Desi market, are sort of like five steps behind everything else that's going on. You can just definitely see that now or where it's more. But I think if, if you take like the BBC Asia Network as, as, a, as a good example, I think they're on their, long, on, their, on their last attempt of trying to get the, the, themselves sorted because the younger, the younger listeners, they're, they're not necessarily listening to like Punjabi Desi music anymore. It's 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 getting harder and harder to to kind of convince, uh, not convince, but kids to listen to it. And unless the the the, the organisations kind of change their way that they work and adapt into that market, you, you lose. You're gonna they, you lose you lose that really quickly. I think so. Long term, I think all radio stations will struggle yeah. because every these days, like my children right um they're eight and six right the way they consume content it's so different right um so when they want to watch something 
or listen to something, they want it now. Yeah. They don't, they don't want to wait for a show that comes on radio from four till six drive time. Mm. They've got other stuff to do, right? They want it right now. They want Roblox. YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. They don't, they, they don't want to mess about. And I, I think they watched a show. My oldest daughter was watching this sort of kids master chef. She really yeah. liked it. The kids cook, yeah. cooking. And um, then the advert come on. And she goes, can we forward the advert? I go, you can't. She goes, what do you mean? I go, you know, it's on now, live TV. They go, what, they're cooking now, live? And I said, no, no, it's been broadcasted now, so you can't fall. It's not Netflix, I said. That's what I said. I said, it's not Netflix. <laughs> or, you know, there, there's adverts, and it's not YouTube where you can skip, you know, ads. And she was just like, that's boring. You know, they don't even watch adverts. So commercial radio stations will struggle. People are not listening to adverts. Um, and that that's why I think a lot of radio stations are doing these podcasts you know that sounds podcast for bbc it's that there's an audience the younger audience are very different listeners right and um i i don't i've had a lot of presenters of the bbc asian network on on my show right and, yeah yeah and it it's a weird one because sometimes they i i, I, I don't know there's not many uh actual interview shows on the bbc asian network you know they have a few don't they but i I think Bobby did that. Bobby did that um, no filter one. I think that yeah. was probably the closest. My, my knowledge of it is not the greatest, if I'm honest. But they, I think the whole they used to have that debate show, whatever it used to be, or ten between ten and one. And then Bobby did this the, the, the no filter. Those, those yeah, are the that, that that you could tell right. that's pure, purely driven from a podcast. Really, you know yeah. that sort of theme of a podcast yeah. to do a no filter, because you know. Surely all conversations should be no filter if mm. you're doing a one-to-one -one with someone about something, you know. Uh, and the debate shows, they always make me laugh, debate shows. Now we're going to talk about um, <laughs> Muslims, Christmas, uh, Jews. Really, you know, they just want people to get people rolled up, don't they? And, yeah, uh, yeah. Let's discuss, you know, can you uh, can you be non-Sikh and get married in a Godwara? Yeah, yeah. And did can you you, why yeah. not? Why not? Why can't you? <laughs> debate it yeah now the uh, stoke your fires it's it's that clickbait almost right it's a clickbait it's not really my style and i don't uh i'm not really into it you know but uh i don't know you could be right i think covid's probably given a resurrection to radio in a way a lot of people at home that couldn't go to work you know and uh listen to radio at home while they're working at home so it's probably gone up slightly but uh long term i don't know how they'll do it it's I just think on-demand content is going to be the future. People yeah. will listen. Fast consumption, isn't it? Fast consumption, yeah. fast, fast media. It will just, it will just do it. It is, it is fast media, and it's very uh, quick. You know, videos for fifteen seconds, and these memes. You know, sixty minute, a uh, sixty second videos, and that's when when my podcast came out. My first episode was an hour and ten minutes. So I said, "Oh, that you got to cut these." podcast down <laughs> they're too long they're too long what do you mean they go look over an hour is going to list for over an hour no one's going to listen how long do you think it should be half an hour maximum 30 minutes i got 30 minutes i go i can't talk to someone 30 minutes and uh you know um so i was tempted to cut them down in the early days i thought yeah they maybe yeah. are a bit too long they ramble on a bit and uh but then i just left it i thought look i'm just going to put them out there this this is long form conversations if you're into long form interviews listen because you can pause them right yeah yeah halfway through Afford give it. a break yeah go <laughs> toilet break and then come back right and, uh, and uh, <laughs> so and i just left them as they were because i thought yeah joe rogan's along mark maron's along other people i listen to along i wasn't you know and if it's an interesting person or you find that person interesting if you're listening you want to hear a lot don't you you want to hear all about them you mm. sometimes half an hour you know, on the radio, you might hear them for 15 minutes. You've got a break off for the news or the travel update. Oh, it always annoys me. I, don't... Why, I used, to, used to wind me up. Because I, I used to I used to listen to like talk sport so much. I knew how long a person had to speak. Yeah. And you knew that there's three minutes until the next advert and stuff. And it used to wind me up. To, yeah. And then if you start knowing, it's another theme song to Selco. One of the yeah, builders. Selco. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm a talk sport fan. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, I, used, yeah. I used to sing that at home randomly and I thought, bastards got me. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's me. how they do it. 
So, so they, and if, if you look at Adrian Durham's show, I like his yeah, show, right? Yeah. Because he, he, he's a bit of a clickbaiter as well. Yeah, right? he's he like, like annoying people. And but it's good. He's, he's got some good points, right? They've got his show condensed into a podcast, right? Mm-hmm. So they get rid of all the ads and blah blah blah. And it's great. You know, it's a great uh, you know little podcast, and that's really what people want to hear, I think. And uh, that's why commercial radio stations will slowly, slowly struggle, I think. But BBC can't because. We pay for it. Pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was waiting for that bit. So, so you know, your you know your relationship with music goes back um, to when you were in a band. Can just tell us a little bit about that and what would kind of like your roles and and your 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 networking within within that field. Yeah, music's been massive. You know, I I would say when I was uh, younger. Um, my home life was quite strained, mm. right? My dad was a bit of a drinker, mm. kind of a strict person. He used to be very strict um, when he wasn't drinking. <laughs> and in the evenings, he'd be super cool, right? And uh, <laughs> I've just had a few drinks, yeah. right? and, um, and it was just a weird sort of dynamic in the house, right? And, I, and as I got older, I thought, I need to do something, you know, because I can't just keep staying at home on the weekends. It's just too much, right? So um, I started getting into music a little bit in my room, you know, listening to uh, Bangadao Fever. Someone yeah. gave me a cassette, Bangadao Fever at, at, at school, right? And I just fell in love with his music. I thought, this is amazing. You know, Punjabi music. And, uh, you know, at that time, Bangadao music was fantastic. It was massive, right? And uh, I just sort of started singing along. We used to speak Punjabi at home. Um, uh, you know, even now I speak to him like that. I had none of these sort of like my kids who speak English more and a little bit of Punjabi. It was yeah. the opposite in my house, more Punjabi and a bit of English. And so I just started singing along and uh, I really enjoyed it. And I, and for me, a kind of escape from being at home was to join this uh, dance group, Bangara group, yeah. Jugunu Bangara group, right? And But I didn't want to dance, I wanted to sing. So, oh, right. And I, right. And uh, I don't know what possessed me. And I, you know, I wasn't super confident as a kid, but I thought, I think I just knew the words to songs. Yeah. That helped. And my Bajabi weren't too bad, right? Compared to what year, what year was this then? Oh God. Um, I must have been 15, 14 or 15, I think. Something like that. So what's well, gotta be 92, maybe a bit more than that, even around the 90s, early 90s. Yeah. I would say, right? And uh, so I joined that group and it's a community group. And they used to do a lot of shows, weddings, you know, the Bangladesh sort of section mm-hmm. in a wedding. We'd done loads of them. I used to do the bowling. And um, sort of started getting into music there, right? And when I got to college, one of my friends had started a band with his family. So his brother was the keyboard player. He was a door key player, my friend. And their dad was a singer. Mm. And uh, I always thought, oh, I'd love to join the band. That'd be The band is the pinnacle, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it, right? At that time, you want to be in a band, right? And I said to him at the college, I said, look, I wouldn't mind doing backing vocals. You know what? I didn't even have that ego in me to say I want to be the lead singer. I did give you a just shit. Wanted, you just wanted that groupy T-shirt and be... <laughs> exactly. How I wanted to be... I, I didn't mind how I got in. Yeah. You know, you even if I had to learn an instrument, I think I probably would have tried mm-hmm. to. And uh, and then nothing happened of, of it at college. And... Um, but I went to gigs with them, a few mm. nightclubs, Hammersmith Palais. I went to them. Yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah. I was seeing DCS and that Mukid Singh, Safari, you know, backstage. Mm. Right. I was a fanboy, right? And I thought this is amazing, right? And if you compare that sort of lifestyle to at home, you oh, know, it was it, it was fantastic. You yeah. know, it was a complete escape. And uh I never used to drink then or smoke or anything. So I didn't have that escape that I use later on, right? So um <laughs> we're coming to that. Yeah, <laughs> we're coming, guys. Hold on, hold on. Right. Um, and then eventually, uh, my friend said, yeah, 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 why don't you come down to practice? And you can do the backing vocals. Backing vocals were easy for me because you don't need to know the whole song, just the chorus, right? Copy if. <laughs> yeah. A couple of hoys. Yeah, yeah. Bunle, 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 and add a tambourine, right? As long as you could keep a little bit in beat in a tambourine, you're fine to go, right? It doesn't take long to learn. And uh, so I joined and uh, started doing weddings. It was fantastic. And there's it, it, a weird thing here because in a sense, I didn't give myself uh, any pressure to learn a song, you see, fully. Because I knew Uncle, Uncle was the main singer, right? He, mm-hmm. 
he's yeah, carrying yeah, everyone. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah, yeah, he's carrying me basically. I'm just in hoys. And when you're doing weddings and you get so used to the songs and you could, that's when um, you could have a few drinks because you, you're not going to be out and you don't need to remember the words. Oh, because you your throat in it, it makes it better. Especially if you yeah, have a whiskey. And me and my best mate, who's a donkey player, I used to, we stand, we used to be uh, sort of located together on stage. Mm. He'd be sitting there, I'll be there. And it, we always, we never used to drink at the start after the interval. You know, the, the, the band would have an interval, right? So it was that after that point, because we thought, all right, we're doing all right. Yeah. <laughs> we could relax a bit. And um, with a bottle of Bacardi, I remember, he used to be under, he's, he's have his donkey on a, uh, a chair. He used to be under there. And, uh, plastic cup because we used to go to the weddings and the you know uh the girl's family would give us a bottle you know I let them do you know and yeah, yeah. you know we're just sort of getting involved and any, uh, any, anything you need coming for it's always the brother-in-law anything you need always, come and see the me, brother-in-law come see, yeah, yeah 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 if you need anything see, uh, yeah. big trays of starters <laughs> on them sort of paper plates and the good old weddings right and uh oh my god it was such a fantastic time and I, at that time I this is the sort of uh sad reality i suppose of um addiction is for someone who knew seen it in my family right uh grew up in it i couldn't see it happening to me mm. i was so oblivious to it i didn't even realize until it's kind of too late that i was doing the same thing i thought i was just having fun and i was at the beginning obviously you know yeah. i'm I say to people, you know, it's great fun drinking if you can do it moderately on a moderate level yeah, and yeah. with your friends, and you know, it's great. Yeah, and uh, but I, I remember just, it was just a fantastic time doing weddings. Honestly, it was uh, even loading the van, unloading the van, the banter in the van, the, the, the sort of scrapes, the things that go wrong, and yeah. you know, going to a gig and there's like ten people there at a gig. There's more people in the band than there are in the audience. <laughs> and we just it's fantastic you know we use it as a practice session and uh so i just love music i like that escape and i think i like performing i'm a bit of a uh I, 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 someone I, someone said are you an extrovert or an introvert because sometimes when i meet people in real life i'm quite quiet really yeah and uh and if, especially if they've seen the show and heard me they always think i'm but i'm not really like that i'm right i'm, <laughs> I'm more of an introvert i kind of keep to myself and lift I get to know someone and uh i it, for me it was just uh an escape from reality uh music and uh I, then i had another friend who played doll in jubilu bangla group he, he wanted to become a music producer he started doing a few tracks you know for people from india he goes you want to sing a song and uh i said what, what you want me to and uh he goes yeah yeah you can sing a song like literally, I would never have recorded a song in my life if, if it wasn't for my mate. Me, mate. I, it was not for pure talent, or you know, no. Someone didn't hear me at a wedding. And said, "Man, we've got to get that guy recording. We've got to get him in the studio." <laughs> no, right? It's basically a friend of mine, and he said, "You want to do a song?" I said, "Yeah, I want to do a song. Definitely." I did a song. It was okay, right? And uh, but for me, it was just like, "Wow, I've got my name on a on a cassette." Cassette, yeah. In the inlay, it says vocal sat man. That used to be the I was best just part of cassette sometimes. Isn't it? Oh my god, I was over the moon. I would just look at that inlay, I was thinking, Oh my god, and I had all these other singers on there, like really good ones, right? And I was thinking, That's me, <laughs> guy from Gravesend, right? It's unbelievable. We made it, we made it, I made it on an inlay, <laughs> right? And uh, then I did another one, and then he goes, We're going to do a video for this. This was with, and he had signed up with Kiss Records then, yeah. My, my friends, right? And this is the time of Z Z Music was the place to have your video, right? If you're not on Z Music, you're nothing, right? And uh, so we made a video and we did it in, this is so cheesy, right? We did it in a friend's club. He had a nightclub. And uh, it was the, you know, girl meets boy kind of thing. And uh, she didn't like me. I liked her. She saw me trying to flirt with a, a, an English girl, Gordy. Had to be a Gordy, right? You know, and... Uh, <laughs> And uh, she saw me and slapped me. It's on YouTube somewhere. And uh, anyway, it came on ZTV. Oh my God. It was, uh, for me, that was, it was, it was unbelievable. You know, because you, you had to wait around, didn't you, on ZTV? Mm. You weren't like on demand. Well, sit around, sit around for an hour listening to other people until your song came on. And then, and then, and then your mum would go, yo, your song's on. And you'd be running in and you missed half, half of it. And you'd be like, fuck. <laughs> I, I, I used to I used to um do the radio with Cash and Pot uh well Polytank on uh on, uh, oh, on yeah. Radio XL so I used to, yeah. uh, 
just before uni, I used to uh, used to do used to be kind of like a co-presenter on it. And um, one of the things afterwards, we used to go to the to like MV Music, used to go all to kind of like the, the record labels around. I always used to just see used to see some of the work like a worker on the back. I won't say which label. Literally, just getting the phone. Did it, did it, did it, did it. Literally, 20, 30 times. So that like, you know, pre-programming, it, ordering their, getting their song on on TV, and I was just like, I, I was just so naive to it. I was like, yeah, hang on, these ain't the the, the general public just putting it in. This is just these lot just pumping in their own numbers for the song Absolutely. to come on again and yeah. again and again and again. That 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 was the original um, birth of fake fuse. Mm. That's a yeah. good point, yeah. Yeah, that, that was the original of, you know, manipulating a system so your, your video will come up more. So that's what people do. They buy cards. And then that also then transferred to iTunes. for um, When it started, buying, yeah. Yeah, buying iTunes cards and then buying your single to get it to number one because that's what you wanted. You want to say I'm number one in the iTunes mm, world chart. World chart. Whatever. But that's yeah, some, that, even if you look now, I bet you now there's that there's somewhere somewhere over the rainbow it's been like number two for at least 15 years. It's still in yeah. the charts, even if you have a look yeah. at it now. But yeah. I, re- I remember that I, I had a, a second incident. Um, we were, I won't say the label again. We, we went to this label and um, the, the guy's just the guy was just talking to me. He's like, "Are you into Bangla?" I was like, "Yeah, I used to collect all. I used to do this, um, you know, just general chat. Didn't really innocent chat." And then he goes, "Oh, do you want to do you want to release an album?" And I was like, "What are you talking?" About? I was like, "What are you talking about?" And uh, he goes, "Oh, look, uh, you know, I was a bit slimmer then. He goes, I had spikier head." And he goes, "Oh, like." You got the look and all this kind of stuff. He goes, "What it is? We've got this uncle back in India who's made this whole album, but he doesn't match the image. He's like 50, 60 years old. I don't know how old he is. He's got this track out. He's got this album. He's come. He said, what we're going to do? We'll take a we'll take a picture of you. We'll put you onto the, on the front uh, on the cover. And uh, he goes, we'll just get another person if you get any bookings. We'll go to the DJ and to do, and uh, we'll pay you this amount." I'm like I am, I was the only thing I used to get paid was like tips or play the doll or whatever you know what I mean. And um, I came home. I, I spoke to my dad, and my dad looked at me. He didn't have to say anything. I just like replied back to the guy. I said, "Nah, you're gonna happen. It's not. Happening. <laughs> it's not happening. <laughs> nah, just it, it, you know what they they give you a look in it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. You go. You know. So what I mean? you 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 could have been um, like Punjabi Milli Vanilli. Yeah, because, yeah, 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 yeah. Fake, 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 yeah. I have no idea. Even to this day, can't work any decks. Don't have no interest in trying. Nothing at all. Um, I got a real keen interest in Bangla music. I love my Bangla. Mm. Um, so we know quite a lot of mutual people anyway. And um, I just thought you know, that for me, I had in a very short space of time, I had my vision of Bangla purity like shattered. Yeah, people buying this. Fake yeah. Food. Ghost, ghost production was yeah. coming more and more, uh, and I grew around like my dad's friends were like you know Sadala Gill, so I knew kind of like the purists in that way and how they used to have this kind of friendly, they have friendly rivalry. They always mm. got on very respectful. Used to see him, you know, my, my my journey to school used to be. I I would argue I had the best journey to school in Handsworth. I used to go past the um, Suffrey's house, yeah, past the Buddha Pradesi. Um, the John Mal studio with the with the um, with Case Bomra opposite my school. Um, up the up the road we had like Jazzy and Sukshind Shinda I used to live down. You know when they went in Finland, yeah. like, all all around around yeah, you know, yeah. down the bottom of the road. So I was yeah. like AS Gang used to live just uh, off Sandal Road. So I was like, yeah. I was literally just in the golden era, going past, yeah. going to school. I used to have Roma Music Bank. Or into star agency, you know, yeah, yeah. Everything. everything. You you you, you you had a great journey to school. Oh my! I, I, mean, honestly. I, I, I walk I, I walk past the chip shop and Chippo Alley where we would have fights, <laughs> and that was that was a journey, really. Yeah. But that's the fantastic journey what you had. You know? Oh yeah, that because, was the, that was a peak time as well. Yeah, because but, we, we used to, I used to like slowly walk past the house just in case one of them came out, and it used to be like, I mean, there's a place in West Brom, um, the the market centre. 
And honestly, like if you see if you saw Sadala Gill there, it, it was he was just swamped. People come, he couldn't walk two or three yards. It was literally someone else coming co- coming up to him, and he's with his family. It just it just bombarded constantly. Yeah. And then when when I was playing ball, yeah, B twenty one were just like in their peak. You know, I think people don't understand how massive like Bali Jagpa was. Yeah, you know, like yeah. how massive that guy was. Yeah, and you know, like dominating. You just just to grow up in that area and living in in Hansworth at the time, it was just yeah. booming. And then to see all of that kind of like bring it around, to see all of that slowly falling apart and all those things. Never meet your heroes, honestly. It's one yeah. of the yeah. one of the things that, that yeah I learned and seen sort of the back end of the yeah of, of the industry. I just I I, I absolutely even to this day I, I hate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I. I I agree. Yeah, I, I kind of um, realised that in the industry as well. So the more I got into it, when we used to visit ra- la- labels and and I used, to, I used to have this vision of them being fantastic offices and mm. but they weren't. It was just a person, it was just a bloke, weren't it? It was had a record label, right? And uh, it kind of it, you, when you meet your heroes, and I kind of was in that generation where. The live band scene was going and DJs were coming along, right? Yeah. And so I remember going to a gig in um, Zeniths, I think, in London, and we had performed. And after us was RDB. And they were coming on, right? And a big setup, right? There were DJs, but they were like a band almost, you know, there's loads of yeah. them, right? And uh, that was a sort of start of a new generation of music, this sort of DJing producer dj yeah. producer right but i didn't need a band they just needed the singer right because someone some guy on the mic and uh and b21 as well you know they were part of that sort of change in the scene and and i remember a, a buddha actually when i interviewed buddha he's telling me he goes you know people were saying you know what are you doing man you're sort of killing the band yeah, the whole pa systems the whole pa pa movement came in yeah and uh he goes that was sort of you know they weren't happy with him you know, for doing that, they were saying, oh, you know, you know, should have a band and all this kind of business, but it's all the economics at the end of the day, isn't it? Again, you can have cash, three, cash, three is king. cash is, you know, promoters going to have, oh, I'll get these three guys, pretty good looking lads, got great music. They're cheaper than, you know, getting DCS, you know, and that's the problem, right? And people, and it, it was a sad time because as you know, Rick, that, them names you mentioned, that peak of that scene was unbelievable. Oh man! And then under that tier, you had other groups, didn't you? You know, sort of local groups. They were all having a go as well. And it was music. And sometimes you get like a little gem, a song from them. You know, they would make their own great songs as well. You know, remember going to weddings in the back in the day, and you'd think, I wonder what band it's going to. Yeah, be. yeah. You used to ask. Uh, you used to ask the Godfather. I used to ask yeah. my dad to go and find out who's the band, who's come, who's, yeah. who's on next, and then you used to. Not in a bad way. Sometimes you'd have to go, you say, like, find out who's coming on. If it's rubbish, then you're like, oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to go. I've got, got homework. But I remember I used to hear, like, if it was opera, I was like, you know, it's a sick wedding. You know, yeah. you, it was going to yeah. be, you knew it was going to be, it was going to be the one. They, for me, they're like, like they're yeah, they're the best. Yeah, they're the best. Opera, I'm a big, I'm, they're, they're my heroes yeah. to this day. And uh, I, I actually gate crashed a wedding once, me and this girl. <laughs> to uh to see up Nasuki. yeah and uh it's Gravesend's a small town you've been Gravesend have you yeah it's yeah. Super, yeah it's a super small town right everyone knows everyone so it's hard to gate crash yeah but I think everyone just assumes we were invited and um she weren't like a girlfriend or anything just someone that like up Nasuki. <laughs> <laughs> right? and uh and we just went and uh because you would hear in the town up Nasuki are coming yeah. You know, and it, it, was, it was fantastic. I remember when Ajana, Ajana came to the Woodville Halls, right? Mm. And they were at a football event. I used to play football, G&G Football Club, right? And they used to have annual dinner, dinner yeah. and dance. And they had Ajana once. And Ajana were massive then. They had uh, their bowling hour out. And they were such a big... Anyway, we, we went to Woodville Halls and we saw them walking around, saw VJ and this, the drummer. They were going to the shops. You know, while Starstruck, I thought, that's VJ, man, he, Bloody Ajana, and they were an amazing band as well, right? I used to just love that vibe. And you know what? At some way, I always wanted to be part of it. Any way I could, yeah. I want to do something to be part of this sort of... Because, it, you know, people say to me, oh, on your show, you always talk about the good old days of Bangladesh. And I said, 
and I always think, yeah, maybe I do go on about it too much, but oh my god, it was it was unbelievable. Mm. It, you know, them gigs, them lineups were crazy, weren't they? Safri, Malki, DCS, Sahotas. You might even get Bajabi MC DJing, right? And all for like a tenner, ten pounds. Uh, it's I, unbelievable. I, I, I remember I went to there's a couple of gigs I remember. There's one where PMC had just come. He'd taken a, a really long break or something, and he, he was performing for the first time back in Coventry. And um, I was at uni then, and um, all it had to say was just PMC, and that was it. Yeah, take my money. Here you go, just do whatever. But like, it was it was unbelievable. I remember because there was a guy who had four fights on the same coach going there. You know, one guy had four fights with four different people on a coach trip. That yeah. I mean, for yeah. that, that is some talent. But I think for me, like the, the like the fanboy moment, the, the one that I just like is Jazzy B. If I see Jazzy, like oh, yeah, that, yeah, I I I, I was at Thames Valley University. I saw I saw him at Thames Valley University, and this was when Shuk Shinda Shinda was his keyboard player. Mm. So really early days, right? And he was at a little club. It's got to be about three hundred. It's not a really big club. Three hundred people in in Ealing. Oh my God, this guy was unbelievable. Because I'm sure lads were looking at him thinking, uh, let's see what he was thinking. Because he used to dress strange. Yeah, like he's rough. always eccentric. Yeah, he had a, you know, his Canadian sort of dungarines. His hair was up here. We thought this guy's going to be shit, right? It's going to be, oh my God, that voice of that guy and the energy. And I, just, everyone knew, I think just every, once they heard him, this guy is, is going to be a star, right? Because you, if you remember the images of Bangladesh bands at the time, like the Apna Sagits, were glittery tops mm. and the headband. And, you know, it's kind of, it was getting a bit old, wasn't it? That sort of style, you know, Hida with sparkly sequin tops. And they were getting old. Guy, yeah, they were getting old, right? The generation yeah. was moving on. This, this guy has come along. He's got a hip hop style about him, right? And, uh, Fantastic, yeah, he's one of my favorites. He's even now, look, he's putting out songs and everything you everything he does, you know, it's the top level, yeah, you know, production. He, music, I, think he's, I think he's one of the only ones. I'm, I'm just trying to rack my brains and apologies if I get this top, maybe even Shin, these like who have managed to reinvent themselves successfully decade after decade and still be able to kind of hold, hold their own, like when if like. Jazzy now, you still seem like pushing his boundaries, using his platforms, you know, talking about farmers, you know, the way that he's done it, he's, he's very in tune with a lot of stuff. And, and you know, he's competing and some of it, like, like, you know, still way ahead of, of even the peers now, the ones who are people who are trying, you know, who are trying to, in a friendly way, you know, competition with it, with him. Um, but like, if you, if you, if you said to someone, medals on the table, come on, let's see. That guy, what he's what he's achieved. I mean, I, I, I will. I'm sounding like a fanboy anyway, and I will put my hand up. Like you know, he, he is just. Yeah, he, he's. A, I, I'm. I'm. A, I'm a fan as well. No, yeah. no, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. There's nothing wrong in that because I think we should be proud of him. Yeah. I think he he's probably the uh, perfect Bangladesh star. Yeah. You know, he's got a voice. Obviously, you need that. That's the main thing, right? And he's got great, fantastic voice, right? For that kind of music, that style, he looks good. And he's got great personality when he's on video. You know, he can perform. Mm. You know, and he's good live. I, I, he got, he actually got me into trouble once. Like, obviously, it, not that way. It, it's trouble, but it just like uh, that, he it, it didn't know me, and he still doesn't know me anyway. Um, we were, <laughs> I was doing some, I was doing um, uh, photography. I was helping like save our jackpot. You know, that we had this, we had this, we had this wedding. And uh, Jazzy was just, I think Orkady had just come out. And that was just, you know, he had Nog on the, you know, and, yeah. Uh, um, so I hadn't seen him at a wedding before. I've seen him at gigs at odd bits, but I've never seen him at, like, at a wedding do like a full, full show. Anyway, um, we're doing, we're, <laughs> me, me and Jesse do this wedding. And uh, he walks in. And I'm literally standing there for half an hour. Couldn't give a shit about the wedding. I was just watching him. Yeah. And uh, he's like, all the kids were sitting on this um, on the on the dance floor, just watching watching. And I'm like, I'm doing exactly the same. 
and just sees that effing and blind. Like, there's a fucking non key shot going on here. What are you doing? You're like, yeah, go and, yeah. you know, do this yeah. thing. And I'm like, this. Oh man, he, he yeah. just he just he just dominated. So it's a, it's, a, it's a weird one, Ricky, because some people they've just got it. We don't know what it is. It's you can't put a finger on it. Why they just got something magic about them? You know, certain singers, certain performers, certain actors, certain right, something magic. You know, so like when but they that was an stage, era without even like social media and stuff with that as well. So if, you, yeah. if you look at some of the the artists today, and you take social media away. Would you? Would you, how would they stand in that time in in that era? I mean, it's it's unbelievable. But if you look at the likes of like Gordon Woodley, like, Sidhu, Diljit, I mean, the numbers that they're putting out are, are just like, and you know, the, the star power, the the the, the prices that the, that people c- can get, the money involved now is just unbelievable. Mm. But when I look at pure heart wise, and you look at that era of like. A.S. Gang, uh, you know, Safri, and like even Jazzy back then, who he, you know, he's, he's still talked about today and you can still talk about him then, you know, to have that relevancy for that long and still be able to be up there. Yeah, still being on top of the game. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. He, he's, he's fantastic. And uh, um, good on him, man. Yep. You know, I, I love everything he does. And like you said, he uses his platform for uh, great purposes as well. Mm-hmm. You know, he doesn't just promote himself. He's, he's passionate about certain things about Punjab and, you know, uh, the protests and he, he, he's fantastic. I met him once at a wedding. I, actually, I met Buddha. I saw, it's my, it was my um, sister-in-law's wedding. Mm. Right. And uh, they didn't tell me what band it was. They had a band. Amazingly, it wasn't that long ago. And uh, I, wonder, I thought, I wonder what band they got. And I could see people setting up. I was trying to see if I could recognize, recognize any that. Yeah. 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 And it was it is Buddha Buddha Jagpo, and I thought, well, Buddha plays with a lot of people, right? It could be yeah. anyone, right? And, um, <laughs> anyway, I said, who's, who's playing? And he goes, it's Jazzy, and it's Jazzy B. I go, what Jazzy B's here, right? I became a fanboy. This I, I, I must be 30, 35, <laughs> right? And uh, I go, where is he? He goes, he's in the van, you know. And uh, I go, can I meet him? He goes, yeah. Your Buddha's looking at me, thinking. You've got to remember, he used to see me at gigs as well like, with PDM, right? And yeah, so yeah. he's a bit like, yeah, he's over there, and. Uh, Anyway, I met I met a Jazzy and I said, um, "Oh, Jazzy, nice to meet you, man. I got you're the real deal, man." Some hip hop. T- <laughs> he goes, "Cheers." I went, "Cheers," and I went, "That's it." <laughs> I, 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 had, I, had, I actually I had Jazzy for my wedding, and uh, I, I, you know, went round the went round the back to me. I I cannot tell you what I said. I was just like, "Yeah, hey, dude, thanks for coming to my wedding." I was yeah. up there. And then, uh, yeah, you, he's like, yeah, you paid for him to be here. I was like, oh, yeah, that's yeah. a good point. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're just like... Uh, no, oh, it's then, cool, man. If, yeah, if, you yeah. like, if, if you like someone and you see them and they're fantastic, they do the business, I bet he's fantastic at your wedding. I bet he absolutely just killed it. And, uh, oh, man. Yeah. We, we had yeah. gate crashes there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would have turned up if I knew. Yeah, I I know. Know. Exactly, yeah. I think that was... I think it was just after Rambo. It was like... 2009 yeah he's so yeah. In, in terms of like then um for, for music wise now um what do you what do you feel like the scene is compared to what when you were growing up sorry yeah. not growing up but <laughs> being part of yeah it. yeah yeah i know i know what you mean and uh it, it's an odd one because um i don't know too much about the scene these days mm. i really don't and you know back in the day i could name you every band every band member what label they're on, what albums they... I can't now. There's just too yeah. much coming out, right? And uh, I listen to people like uh, Sidhu, and I thought, yeah, that's a pretty cool song. But I'm not invested as much into them. And the the, the scene's very different, right? It's a, it's not a UK scene, Bangladesh scene, really. It's a global scene now. Do you think Canada's... Ta- it is one for you. Do you feel Canada's taken over now? I think so. I think yeah. so. We used to laugh at them, didn't we, with uh, their remixes. Like they had really terrible remixes with, uh, and their their covers always always used to have uh, marijuana themed covers, and um, and we thought that yeah, Canada they're a bit they're a bit slow, they're a bit they're a bit desi we used to call them right, yeah, a bit you know old old school, but yeah, I think they have, I think they they're really influenced by hip hop culture big time. Canadians are, and uh, even in their mannerisms, the way they speak. Uh, and that, that's that, that's uh, proved in their music as well. Um, the Brown Boys, I see them a lot popping up around, you know. And I think they used to work with Sidhu, didn't they? Yeah. Well, and they had an argument. They had an argument. 
and uh, they split up or something like that, right? And uh, remember, I don't do my research, so some, <laughs> I know they've had an argument. No, yeah, I, I'm hoping you correct me, you know, but um, yeah, I think they're kind of all kind of like like parted, parted their ways. You need that, you need a bit of uh, you need some arguments, don't you? Yeah. If you want to be a hit that. <laughs> yeah, you need you need that little uh, bit of uh, bit of masala in the mix, and that's what makes it right. I just think like you, if someone said to you, "Where was the home of punk rock?" You could actually point it down to even roads and streets, like hands of Birmingham. It was like it oh, was yeah. always between like Birmingham, London, and and yeah. shifted. Um, you know, power shift. Like, I felt like the power shift went to kind of East Midlands, like Derby as well. Um, yeah. And then like then you've seen this kind of like influx of just like. Canada just pouring and I think where those artists I mean, I mean I could be completely wrong and I'll put my hands up if it's completely it's just my own feeling is where some of those artists right from Punjab were coming over they want to work or, or live in the UK I think they've just seen like with Canada the expense the the you know the lifestyle and people going over there naturally the artist I think that the, the language is, is more alive like Punjabi is yeah. more alive in definitely Canada. And, and I think that has a huge influence on it. As Punjabi's yeah. dying out here, how you know that next generation of trying to inspire is is a, is a, there's a few there's fewer. Uh, it's still here. It's still few. It's fewer than what it used to be. But in Canada, you could just see it just popping off. You you know it's gonna. You can already see it. You can already yeah. see where that where that whole market's going from that side. Yeah. USA yeah. as well. USA obviously very close to it, but. Canada, I feel like uh, it's just what I could be wrong, as I said. But I just feel that that power move is the power shift is gone. I think so. I think so. I think uh, you're right. I think a lot of people are probably moving there due to the lifestyle out there at the time. I mean, if you remember, Jazzy V actually came to the UK mm-hmm. because he knew where the power was in in Bangra, right? UK. Good point. Yeah. So he he left Canada to come to the UK and lived in the UK for a while, didn't he? And then, but he then this is why he's probably a ahead of the curve always. He then sort of based himself in India because you can mm. see the India market was really exploding, right? And uh, now it's a global industry. So he's, he's Canada, UK. Well, he's not Can- UK so much now, is he? He's Canada. No, no, I think he's, he's back in Canada full time. I actually don't live to, uh, where he used to live. I actually don't live too far from, from, from there. Um, mm. But he, yeah, he's, 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 um, he's, he's back in, in Canada and then coming over here for trips and then going back going uh, this, off, is, yeah. this is all snapchat this is all i could just see from you know like i could be 100 percent wrong so i'll put a disclaimer out this but i i, I i'm not 100 percent sure yeah. from it from but a... it was only snapchat so there you go <laughs> <laughs> there we go see so it goes back to social go, it goes back to social media yeah, social media yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's the other one tiktok as well tiktok people, people i gotta get i've got to start that i have to, I, i've been <sighs> people said to me look i had a uh a girl I interviewed, she's a young girl, she's a dancer, mm. and she's way more hip than me. Mm. She said, oh, you should get on TikTok. I said, not another bloody social media thing. I'll get sticker posting on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. Right? And she goes, no, TikTok's the one, right? And uh, she's right, it is, right? And it's just constant now, isn't it? You know, just posting and posting and replying. If you people put a message and you feel compelled to reply back and say, cheers, thanks for listening. Yeah. Well, you know, it's that part I hate. I hate the social media part of posting the show. And, uh, but it's all part of it. You, if you're not, uh, if you don't yeah, do it. The, yeah, it's all part. I, the only thing I keep consistent is on the Wednesday when I release. Um, but sometimes I, like, I forget, not out on purpose, but I've forgotten to, you know, I'm, I'm doing something with the kids or I'm out somewhere like, Oh shit! I forgot to post that it's coming out on Wednesday, and then I was like, actually, this was the reason why I got into this. I got into mm. this to kind of interview people who I'm interested in, and but mm. it, but you soon start learning the that side of stuff. Uh, I, I recently just got kind of a little bit kind of like shadow banned on the on the, on the, um, when I posted something because it, it was nothing ridiculous. It was because there was a contra- there was a hashtag that I used like a COVID hashtag. Um, I was interviewed like a director of public health. <laughs> you know, what, what do you want me to talk about? You know, it's it's in there. Um, so that's interesting, I'm not, isn't it? That's, I'm, not, that, I'm not comfortable with that side of it. No, that's quite interesting, though, that, you know, you. so there's a company like in America who are kind of judging what's allowed or not allowed with a hashtag. Yeah. You know? And you've done it on a, like you said, the person you're interviewing is about public health, right? And yeah. so you're going to put hashtag COVID, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's important uh and so it goes about freedom of speech you know when you 
that's why podcasting is great because it's kind of still the wild west mm-hmm. there's no rules you can talk about anything you want obviously you don't want to incite do you ever i remember the question i was going to ask you sorry do, have you ever protected your guest in the sense of they've said something yeah and they never regretted saying it no yeah, I have. I, I, I've never cut anything out of a show. Okay. Right. So, but there's one time where I, the person I was interviewing, they'd been through a, a messy divorce, <laughs> and uh, they were talking about their sort of, uh, not the divorce as such, but kind of their life in the marriage. And obviously, I'm not fact checking any of this, am I? So I'm just taking people's word for it and listening. Mm. But, but when the, when it was released. Um, I had a massive email. I don't get many emails, right, from, from the show, but massive email. Could have been about two, two A4 sides, right, of just going through the other person's version of events, mm. you know, and I thought, what am I going to do here? <laughs> so I, I, didn't, I didn't get into this. They go, you've got to take it down. Or we're, we're going to get our lawyers. That's what they said to me. We're going to take it down. And then I had to contact this other person who's like the sort of intermediary for this interview who sort of hooked me up with this person. I said, look, oh. this is what's come. I don't want none of this. Yeah, yeah. Right? And, uh, and they go, well, let me listen to the interview. See what... And it was so banal. They didn't mention anyone's name. They didn't say anything. You know, they didn't publicly mention no one's name. So they couldn't really do anything because oh. legally they could say, well, we didn't say a name. You know, and anyway, I left it. But that was the only time where I thought about taking the show off mm. because it was too much and they they sent the first email but then they, then they found me on facebook <laughs> and sending me messages on there as well and, it, and actually the guests sorted it out i think they spoke to them and said look yeah. you know, this is how it is i don't know who exactly it was it was anonymous but that was the only time and i've been pretty lucky really because you know i'm taking everyone's at face value whatever they tell me but that's the, right. that's just the art of conversation, isn't it? It's like yeah. when you're having that discussion, it's like you've got your own filters to decide whether it, it, whether you um, you know you believe the guest or they, you know yeah. we could be talking, we could be chatting shit to each other full time, but I, I'm sure somewhere in this conversation, people have picked up that there is some genuine, you know, truth. The, yeah. yeah, truth in what's been said. I think if if unless people are talking about public health in the sense of telling you to do certain things for your health don't do this eat this then i'm a bit wary because i don't yeah. unless you know it could be unsafe or you know unless they're telling you to eat more you know carbohydrates and protein and fats that's fine you know <laughs> i can take that yeah. but if they give some medical advice then i'll probably put a disclaimer and say look you know i'm not a doctor mm. i don't know if that person's a doctor either so uh, <laughs> ben, do doctor. Uh, take, take, take your face about value but uh, have holiday for anything yeah, yeah. onions, onions cures COVID. Yeah, Vix, Vix, <laughs> Vix, Lucasade. Uh, Lucasade was another one, weren't it? You, oh, it that was... used to piss me off at the beginning of it. We used to hear, like, oh, we've got the, you know, this, this, this medicine sorts COVID out, that will sort COVID out. And you're like, hang on, why, why don't you go down to the local hospital and tell him you know yeah. what you're talking about? I think even the yes. dark cancer, yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, and, and go and help out for it, but it's just in the. The way how the way how some of this news kind of spreads around is is, is ridiculous. ridiculous. Yeah, again, it goes down to how we're connected now via social media. You know, mm-hmm. a message can be spread so quickly, positive and uh, nefarious as well. You know, we're talking about people believe it. You know, you see a mm-hmm. message saying, "No, no, don't get vaccinated. You're going to be uh, implanted with a microchip." Mm-hmm. And uh, I've got I've got friends who are quite close friends, and they will send me these messages. And I said, look, just get jabbed. You're not going to get a bloody microchip. You're not that important. Yeah. To, for them to you don't need it if it's microchipping. You've got a phone. You've got, that's, yeah. Got, that, got that's in your pocket. You, yeah. That's got, your, <laughs> that's got your thumbprint. It's got your date of birth. It's got all your contacts, everyone you know. It's got pictures exactly. of your kids. It's got yeah. everything. You don't yeah. need it. What, what, what are you hiding that they can't get anything anyway? Someone sent me a oh, video. What are you of a doing? Guy. Yeah, well, exactly. I mean, someone sent me a video of a guy who's in America. And this was in COVID, just has what happened March, April last year. And he's going, Yeah, this is a government conspiracy. It's not, there's no COVID. It's rambling on, right? And I replied back to that person and said, Oh, who's this guy? 
you know, is he some kind of doctor or mm. he goes, no, no, it's just some, he's a guy in America. I go, but who is he? And it's just some random person, any person on the street just spouting off. And I go, why are you sharing this stuff, man? Because we don't know who this person is. He's just oh, talking shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, come on. But uh, yeah, conspiracy is always uh, there. They always wind me up. It always amazes me, the people that believe them. They're very intelligent, good people. And they believe it, you know, and I think it's a psyche, a human psyche to believe certain things. You know, we look at people like Di when Diana died, it had to be a conspiracy, right? It couldn't have been maybe just an accident. I don't know. We don't know, do we? But I think that's everything. the point though, isn't it, as well? Because it's like when you look at conspiracy, you 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 look at the fry the fry, the mind uh, mind frame and you think during experiences of the government. Um, you don't necessarily could trust everything what's come out. And eventually some people get proved right. And you're like, oh, because they were right then, this means they're right about this con conspiracy theory. Mm -hmm. and, and as you, you know, you've seen some stuff with like Dominic Cummings in the last couple of days. And you're like, we knew all of this anyway. Yeah. And it just yeah, like, yeah. proves wrong. And then you just give the conspiracy theories more ammunition to carry on. And the gasoline going on all this fire to like, just to get people, I mean, I remember some guy, he was talking about, oh, what's this in a vaccine? I was like, you do fucking coke? Yeah. <laughs> you, you you snort whatever you're doing up your nose and you have no idea what's in there, but yet you give a shit about this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, I think somewhere in your priorities is wrong. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, 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 I agree, I agree. And, uh, you know, it, it, yeah, it's just a, it's a funny thing about conspiracies. I don't know. I think sometimes people, when sometimes something big happens, say 9-11, I think it's such a profound event for people that we can't comprehend that sometimes maybe this just may happen. People, mm. crazy people get together, fly planes into buildings. Mm. We like to put it, we like to have control of life and we've got to think actually it's conspiracy. It's got to have a narrative that fits our sort yeah. of way that we think. It couldn't just be some uh, people who had organised this themselves and from a cave in uh in Afghanistan somewhere but uh, I think that will happen anytime there's a big event I mean you know can't get bigger than Covid probably and that's yeah. conspiracies all over the place about Covid right uh, although I do believe it may have come from a, a Covid uh, from from a laboratory maybe Wuhan yeah, the, I think there was something about that in the in the the press today, where they're actually talking about more of the conspiracy theories around. I just it. think it's I think the coincidence of there being a laboratory. If you're gonna Wuhan, if you're gonna put a bet, yeah. But I, I mean, think I asked I asked I asked my I asked the the director that the public health, and he, he was like, even it makes no necessarily no difference. It's already here now. We've got to do it, and even if it is the protocols that we need to kind of prevent, everyone needs to look at their own their measures to make sure that if anything does happen, what do you do next time? Because these pandemics, they do come in bunches mm. and variants that come um, are going to be, there's thousands of variants out there already. Yeah, yeah. It's just variants of concern. Um, but yeah. the, the risk is, is that pandemics uh, come more at once. And I think they even said as well on the, on the news the other day that um, there is, is, it's likely for other ones to start happening soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can imagine that. They said there's thousands of uh, potential pan, uh, viruses out there anyway mm. with animals. It mm. just takes that jump. It needs that jump, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. That is to, to, to I, mean, that, 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 I mean, it drove to a lot of people to actually kind of drink it. And I'm trying to do full circle to come back to, <laughs> your, to your bit there. So I hope good you segue, appreciate good that segue. segue. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I didn't want, so with music comes that kind of lifestyle, comes with it in there. How bad did it get? Um, you know what? It's interesting because um, people want to know: was it your rock bottom? Yeah, yeah, get, yeah, rock bottom. And I said, no, not really. I don't think you need to because uh, I think when you get to a point where you think, you know what, I'm not enjoying this, but I still need to do it, and I feel crap every morning, but in the evening I'm drinking again, mm. and when I'm happy, I'm drinking. When I'm a bit down and depressed, I'm drinking. Uh, when I only want to have a couple of beers, I can't stop mm. until I'm blackout drunk. I think it's a combination of them things to make the decision. Um, and it, it really creeps up on you. And I think you're right, in COVID, a lot of people out of boredom will think, you know what, let's just uh, have a few more drinks, you know, let's, let's 
I'm not going. You can't anywhere. go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, we're not going anywhere exactly, and uh, we're not going to work tomorrow if you're furloughed. You know, we're getting paid. Might as well have a few drinks, and uh, um, and I think it gradually creeps up on people. And then I, I tried a lot of things to stop. I just, you know, uh, cold turkey. I just stopped. That worked for a month or two, and I felt better in myself. And I thought, yeah, this felt good now. I feel really good. And then I thought. Thing is, when you when your mind clears a little bit and the fog goes, you start thinking, oh, maybe I'm putting too much into this. Maybe I weren't that bad. Maybe I just had a bad month <laughs> or, or a bad year, you know. And uh, maybe I need to change this external things. I need to change, change my job. You know, um, I don't know, move, move to another place, or I don't know, uh, new friends, external things, change. But I did that. I did. I changed all the things, and I still went back to the. To the one thing and I thought it can't be that hard to just to stop to drink so I remember I always had that in my mind about my dad and yeah. he actually passed away because of drinking and I thought you know it's not good I know it's not good but I can't stop so how am I going to stop right so I remember <laughs> my family actually took me to uh, doctors we had a Pajabi doctor as well oh. and they said it had been double off the ice yeah, drinks too much and da -da -da -da. Uh, and, uh, and uh, Dr. Uncle was saying ha ha he, and he and, and they they said, oh, he goes to me, why don't you take up golf? Right? And I said, remember, I'm really hung over here, right? And, uh, don't, and I said, they have some of the best bars going? Yeah, and I said, a golf? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, <laughs> right? And I said, at the golf club. I said, a golf? He goes, yeah, you need to take your mind off it. Right? And I said, all oh, right. And, I, and I was thinking, in my head, I was thinking, I've been trying to do that. That's what I've been trying to do. You know, uh, I'm trying to stop, but I can't, right? And... Uh, I mean, golf's fun. I like golf. <laughs> At that point, you know, uh, I, it, so that really showed me what sort of the medical um, institutions don't really have a grip on addiction as well. They don't really know what to mm -hmm. do, uh, you know, unless give you, send you to a counsellor, maybe, or uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, you know, and uh, I went to Alcoholics Anonymous and I walked in there and it was all white people, right? And the whole point of that place is that you try and resonate with people's stories you know and uh they would share their stories they would someone sitting in front they'll share their stories and you kind of relate to what they're saying and i thought i'm not going to relate to any of these people it's all good here. there's no Punjabi people in there there's no black people in there a majority of them male white men and uh i thought this is crap i don't want to do this in my life you know um i'm a bangada singer man yeah 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 i will i'll go on the stage man what's going on you know, and I, you know, I've done, you know, I had a video on ZTV. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know who the fuck I am? <laughs> yeah, sitting in this room. I, to, I remember saying that to my sponsor actually. I said, "Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, if you're a singer, I used to do this and this." And he goes, "I don't really give a shit." Because <laughs> look, he's a gorda, right? And in my head, I think he's a gorda. You don't know. You don't know. You don't. Right? Yeah, you don't understand. Yeah, yeah. And so, but he's, he's right. He goes, "It doesn't really matter." what you do and he's a successful um he still is uh solicitor you know he's got a massive firm massive firm right in medway like really really big mm. and um he's got you know you know to look at him he's very successful a lot of money but he he can't drink he just he said people like me and you he goes we can't have one drink he goes um that, that's what you got to remember he goes you just can't have that one drink because you have one you want another and it took me ages to, and I stuck at it Ray, for a good couple of years and I started getting better, right? But I really didn't like the sort of religious theme of it. And it's not mm. religious at all for anyone that's thinking of going. If you're, if you're struggling and you want to stop drinking, AA is a good place to go. You find the right groups and join on it. I'm, I'm not, you know, nothing against them at all. Really good people. Like I said, I had a sponsor for a good 18 months and I'm still good friends with him. I just found it that uh, I couldn't relate. I think it was that Punjabi in me that these are not, not my people, man. And they don't understand. Yeah. Because I remember when I was in, when I got sober about three, four months, we had an Indian wedding coming up. That's and I told my sponsor, yeah. and I said, I've got to go to a wedding. He goes, you don't need to go. I go, I do. He goes, no, 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 no. He goes, look, if you're, if you're struggling and you think you're going to drink, you're best off not going. I go, mate, that's not what, how it works in Indian weddings, right? When you've got yeah. a family wedding, you're all going, wherever you know the person. Yeah, yeah, are, yeah, right? yeah. He, he couldn't get... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that girl... She wants yeah. to go as well. Got, got commitments. God damn it, right? But he didn't understand that that sort of cultural change mm. thing about, especially Punjabis, right? Drinking, 
he didn't understand quite understand that part right and uh i still i went to the wedding obviously and i didn't drink i don't think that that one but uh i remember i stopped going to their meetings in aa and uh i just thought it's not for me and i can't do it no more and uh i was all right for a while and then but i started drinking again and uh back to square one you know thing is a lot of people think if you drink for a while and you stop um when you start drinking again you don't start from the beginning you, you carry on where you left off and, it, and you accelerate more so you know if you're a 10 point a day drinker you could stop for six months when you go back you're not going to be a one point a day drinker and then build up you, you, you within a couple of days you're probably drinking 10 points again and then you know uh and i found that out that that research is true right oh. and, um, and i just back on the same old bandwagon Right and uh, Ricky, right and uh, <laughs> I was back there again. I thought this is crap because I knew, it, I knew en enough of myself to say, look, I've done some things in my life that I can do things. I'm not completely useless. I'm not a stupid person. Fairly intelligent. I can read and write. I can work stuff out. I can do things. So what? Why is this thing? It's all hard. Hold, why is it holding me back so much? It's such a you know such a minor thing. It's, there's a drink, don't drink it. It should be that simple, right? But it's a psychological thing. It's uh, it's a confidence thing. When you go to the weddings, I don't know about you, but a lot of weddings are quite boring, right? After a while, they're big events. You don't know. There's loads of people. And I used to just love going to the hall and having a drink, right? And then you get into it a bit, right? But so I've been to a few weddings now when I haven't drunk. And mm. the, first, the first few were, oh my God, they were so long. And especially when you're not drinking, right? You're just waiting for the starters to come out. And the food. Can I tell you a thing you're really looking forward to? Yeah. And, that, and the problem and is... Shit, you're getting Mackies or Chippy on the way home. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I was thinking, what when I get home? And, uh, I used to think that. <laughs> and especially, you know, the boys' table. There's always a boys' table, isn't it? Right? The most dangerous table in that hall yeah. is the boys' table, right? And if you, <clears throat> if you, you know, if you come across anyone there or you bump into someone, oh, come on, come and have a shot. Especially my reputation in Gravesend. Yeah. As a drinker as well. I, 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 come on, let's have a shot. They put the uh, emotional pressure on you, you know. Oh, it's my wedding, man. You're not going to yeah. drink, you know. But I've had five have kids. Come yeah, on, yeah. Have one just, for each kid. Yeah, one kid. Exactly. Have one. Just have one. Just uh, I just I just got divorced. Come on, let's have a drink, <laughs> right? And, uh, any excuse, right? And uh, it that's tough. That peer pressure of stopping, right? And uh, it's hard when you've got a group of friends, and you and you lose that social circle as well because a lot of it you. You, you do go to the pub to watch football and, you know, um, music, you know, Bhangra, it's all part of it, really. And I thought, if I stop that, I'm going to lose all my friends. And my big part of my life, sadly, was drinking involved, right? And uh, I thought, I'm going to lose all this and I don't want to lose all this. And that was the reluctance of it. And eventually i think the penny dropped right because i'll tell you what happened i stopped for a while good 12 months life was great i'd started the podcast back up british asian podcast mm. so i moved up north you see i've done really well it's i was doing fantastic i was getting healthier then i went to see my friends in grace right it's not their fault right and uh, anyway i i had a drink there i thought i'm not going to see them all the time now because i moved so like once she once a year i might see them anyway i got completely smashed right as per normal right and it's late at night and uh, I was trying to phone up a dealer to get some cocaine, right? Because mm. for anyone out there, it's good cocaine and alcohol work really well together. Right? For some reason, them two things together, it's you know, and cigarettes, um, <laughs> the trifecta of uh, the actually, that is the, the, uh, it actually when you mix cocaine and alcohol, it formulates a different uh, chemical in your liver, yeah. it's called cocoethylene. And what right. that does, that gives you the, the impression that it's actually, so you've got a, one which is a depressant and one which yeah. is a stimulant. Um, the, in, people think they cancel each other out because you can drink more once you take Coke. What's actually happening is the effect on your body like expands, it's putting more pressure on it, but you get that feeling that you're, you're getting sober. Yeah, exactly. And it, it is exactly that. And then if you think about it, look at the pressure it's putting on your heart. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. How, how, how much is your heart, you know? working to just to keep you stable you, can, you know it increases your chance of death by 21 times yeah 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 i mean it's it, looking back at it it's crazy you know you're <laughs> talking about that guy who does covid and uh you know and he didn't want the injection but he does cocaine and mm. you know i i 
I think I've sorted cocaine off some fantastically dirty toilet tops in <laughs> pubs, right? And uh, probably old men's pubs, right? Not give a shit. And then, you know, obviously expensive cocaine, right? So you yeah. have to wipe it off, right? And you, you do it. Yeah. And in my head, I'm thinking, I could not imagine myself doing something like that. Yeah. I go to a bar now and I get Diet Coke or whatever I get, right? I look at the glass, see if it's clean at the rim. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's, I've, I've changed a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Four 360. <laughs> I'm looking at the glass. Right? But, <laughs> and then you have the cheek to kind of return it back. I yeah. say, that. I got it used to. Uh, look at, look look at a fork in there and see if it's dirty. And, yeah, um, yeah. And it's just, um, it's just a really... It's a really bad emotional, physical net you can get tangled in with that because mm. you can't find a way out. And because, and the main thing about it is you think you're the only person that it affects. All my mates can drink, all right. What's wrong with me? I want to be like them. They have a pint and two and go home to their families. Why can't I do that? Right. And uh, I don't know what it is. It could be genetics, it could be yeah. anything, right? Uh, I could have very low uh, endorphins. Right, that I need, uh, but that could be all bullshit. I could just really enjoy drinking, mm-hmm. right? I don't know, but so I thought. Look, anyway, where the story was, I went you, to Graves End. We went you out. Found your field. dealer. Yeah, I found my dealer, right, and I was out of it completely. My mates, they're not really into uh, drugs like that, right? And <laughs> um, I'm surprised they're my friends at the time, but <laughs> they're not into it. And uh, I go, just drop me off here. I'll be back in a minute. It's like twelve o'clock at night, right? And uh, Okay, where are you going? I go, no, no, I just got to see someone. I go, it's 12 o'clock at night. I go, don't worry about it. You know, you get a bit effing and blind. And I'll be all right. Uh, anyway, I was knocked on the door. And uh, dealer's mum opened the curtains. 12 o'clock at night, right? <laughs> She's looking at her. I'm looking at her. And anyway, I walk back to the car. They go, what are you doing? And they go, oh, God, I don't, I don't, um, don't worry, he's not in. <laughs> he's not in. And next morning, I, I, I didn't... I didn't think twice of that, you know, I've obviously knocked on someone's door middle of the night and uh, I woke up their mum, you know, disturbed their family, probably got kids in there. And uh, anyway, my friends were like, yeah, yeah, you was out of it yesterday. The usual, you know, you're worried about what you've done, right? I looked at my phone, have I messaged yeah. anyone? And uh, <laughs> I had, <laughs> and uh, um, trying to piece the night back, you know, what happened, right? And anyway, I went, I came back up, uh, North and you know it's like Christmas drink and I came to my family. I remember picking up some beer on the way back, so I thought I need this. I'm really hungover. And, and my my friend phoned me, one of the guys that was out with me, and he had he had given up drinking himself a while back. He, he'd become uh, a sink, mm. you know, he, and uh, he was he, and uh, he goes, that can I just talk to you? And I went, yeah. He goes, look, man. He goes, I saw you that day. He goes, you know, you're 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 just a better person when you don't drink. Right. And uh, he goes, and I used to try to stop before, but, you know, I saw you that day. That's, too, you know, you can't, you got kids now and say if something happens to you and, you know, you could crash your car or you could die, you could have a heart attack. You know, we're, we're not getting any younger. Right. Oh. And uh, I don't know what that conversation with him, why it hit me. And, but it did for some reason. I thought, yeah, he's right. You know, what was the point of all that weekend? I ruined it, really. I, I didn't really have fun. Didn't really eat any of the mixed grill. Because <laughs> I had too, too much Coke, right? Can't really eat with Coke. I couldn't anyway. And uh, I just thought, I can't live like this, really. And uh, I just um, started read, doing reading on uh, alcohol. Started research, uh, listen to podcasts about alcohol, people that have been in recovery, what they did. There's... And it, things have changed from my first time in AA. There's a lot more online support now. Yeah. Everything was online. There were apps we can go on. We can. Yeah. There's a community of people. There's one. There's, there's a group in the UK called One Year No Beer, where it's not really about religion. It's just about like a challenge. Can you mm. give up for a month, thirty days? Can you give up for three months, or can you do one year no beer? And they sort of incentivize it as a challenge, as a game almost. Yeah. You know, and you've got a support group of people in a similar boat you know you can put messages and i started reading them and i thought yeah yeah this makes sense and a lot of them got into fitness uh that would help them you know especially with endorphins mm. when you're feeling a bit down it really helps right and uh i thought you know let me join the gym then let me just 
do something. You know, it's a bit like probably Uncle, Dr. Uncle, saying play golf. Get, get your mind probably, up. He pro probably had a point, right, to, you know, and to focus on something. And uh, I'm quite, um, when I get into something, I'm full in, you know, mm. like obsessed with it. Uh, so when I got into, into fitness, I really enjoyed it. I thought I feel good. And uh, I didn't feel so depressed. And I had a bit of a challenge to try and lose some weight try and make, build some muscle up. And one of my friends, the same guy who rang me, was selling his squat rack. He, go, he, he goes, you want to buy it? And he goes, because I'm going to put it on eBay. And I went, yeah, yeah, I'll buy it, right? And I drove down, picked it up, set it up. So I've got it in my house now. And I just got into fitness and I started reading more. Then slowly, slowly, I thought, this is working. This is different from last time. This is different. I don't actually miss not drinking. And I went to my first few weddings and I had a whale of a time. And you know, when I said about not going on a boys' table, I sit on a boys' table mm. and I chat with them. And really, I'm taking a piss out of them because as they get dr drunker and drunker, they become stupid, right? And I, mm. I love it. I love the banter of it, mm. right? And dancing. You know, um, I never used to dance unless I had a drink because, you know, mm. I don't want to look stupid, right? Yeah, you look bad, but I would, <laughs> I look, yeah, yeah, I don't want to look stupid dancing, but I do when I'm completely smashed out of my head with, with a tie around my head, you know, with yeah. the stuff. Yeah, right? and, um, <laughs> do the nog dance then. It's just stupid, right? And uh, but I started enjoying myself, and I thought oh, this is fun. You know, this is what weddings are about. You know, and then I look at other people, and you meet amazingly. You see other people, even blokes that don't drink. They're driving, or they got their families, and they're having fun. You know, and they're enjoying the food, they're having conversations, and they're making efforts to meet people. And I started feeling comfortable doing it. And as that went on, it. Months, you know, I thought, you know, my life's good now, man. I'm, I, I like this. A few people started messaging me on Facebook privately, saying, "Oh, uh, you know, we've seen, you know, that you've uh, you don't drink now because they saw me at the wedding or whatever." And they go, "You know, uh, how did you do it?" I said, "Oh, well, this is what I did." Da, da, da. You start reading about things, get more informed. They go, "Oh, yeah, yeah." They go, uh, "Um, I, you know, I can't stop myself, right?" These are people I knew quite well, and I thought, "What?" I thought I'd never in my wildest dreams thought this, you know, they had an issue, but they did. And I got other messages, and now, um, then I realised how bigger, bigger issue this is, and it's such so swept under the carpet. That's why I'm like quite open to talk about it because yeah, yeah. I think, why, 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 why are you living in this cloud under over you, and you don't need to, you really don't need to, you know. And it's not embarrassing, you know. It's it's nothing to be ashamed of, you know, you, at all, because, and if you're just open and talk to people about it, you, you know, there's help, there is help out there. And I started helping these, these guys um, uh, with just little bits of advice, you know, mm. they would ask me and uh, sometimes it, that it works, sometimes it doesn't. That's kind of the way it is, right? That's but um, I've, I've really enjoyed that. And uh that's why I talk about it. And I'd never mind anyone inboxing me, asking me for advice and tips. And uh, the first guy said to me, you're not going to get me into fitness, are you? In the gym work. Yeah. I said, I said, no, no, right. You don't have to do, you don't, but the thing is, I don't think it's a, a cookie cutter way of stopping drinking. Everyone's different. Yeah. Everyone's got a different way of doing it. But the basics of it is you don't have that first drink and you just do it for today. Don't worry about tomorrow. You know, I, I know today I'm not going to drink. And that sort of, builds up and up and up it's like muscle right you keep training that muscle it's about confidence and you'll feel great anyone that drinks is in a having a problem feels terrible i'm telling you your life will be completely changed you will be without doubt the best version of yourself mm. you know if you thought you was very funny when you're drinking or you know you was a good singer or you're a good writer or a good painter when you believe me when you stop drinking you're going to be 100 times better you know, it, because you're just going to be focused. And it, it's a fantastic feeling waking up. Even now, I wake up on weekends. I'll tell you, Ricky, why, uh, back in the day, on a weekend, I used to wake up and I used to go to the paper shop to get the newspaper. Mm. I was never going to read the newspaper. Never, right? And uh, and I always get a bottle of wine. Right? This is before. It's about eight o'clock in the morning. And uh, that excuse was to get the paper. Yeah. Right, to the miss to the to the family, right? And that's what I'd neck neck back in the morning, bottle of wine. Yeah. Uh you have to build yourself up to 
to whiskey. That was more the afternoon drink, but <laughs> it, used be, it used to be wine and uh, then beers all the afternoon. And uh, booze is so cheap, you know, how old are you? you know, it's like, it's, pop, it's, just about access. Four. Access. it's just so, it's access is so. You know, petrol stations sell it now. It's, it's just, it's there's everywhere, right? That is the yeah. craziest, isn't it? Petrol stations where you need to take your car to refill. You got all this drink driving, but yet you can buy booze from there. Yeah, yeah. If if someone was to invent invent alcohol now, say, look, we're going to make this liquid, right? All right, it's this liquid. You drink it, and it makes you uh, lose your inhibitions, makes you say silly things, and uh, if you drink too much of it, you might be sick. Or you know, might even piss yourself, you know, or you might start a fight with someone. But other than that, and it don't taste that great either. <laughs> but you know, you know, uh, here it is, and can we sell it? You know, if they went up to like uh, Asda and to the to the marketing people, say this is it, they would say no, can't sell that. Sounds like a bloody a drug. It's a drug, um, but it is you know, it's the most acceptable drug in the world. Yeah, you know, um, you know, we couldn't we, we couldn't see heroin being sold in the shelves. Uh, but the thing is, I, because there are people that can go out and have a drink. I think you you, you go out, Ricky. Don't you have a pint with your mates, watch your football? Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> very strange, very strange people that do that. And uh, um, then I think the onus is always put back on the person who can't do that. That there's something wrong with them, you know. But I think people should give themselves a break because you actually are drinking a liquid that, you know, your decisions are not great after that, you know. Um, but some of the greatest times were with alcohol, without doubt. You know, mm. you know, that's the, that's a conundrum. It's it's, because... it's it's just natural human behavior, isn't it? It's human behavior where you've to have some of your best time, you're functioning on a substance. To have some of your worst times, potentially you're functioning on a substance. Yeah, and yeah. It's the, and it is the control of that that substance that 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 does it. I think it was just interesting, you know, just kind of you know, first of all, amazing in terms of your you know where you got to from you from from your start and your base, you know, to get to uh, your fitness, you know, I see uh, on socials as well, it's like fantastic, you know what I mean? And I think the more and more people who have these kind of public sharing or, you know, able to tell their story in that way, it's only just going to attract it. And I think especially with the conversations we've had today around the music industry, I've had, I've said it before on a couple of episodes where I've, I've had to get people into recovery from the music industry. Yeah. And, you know, to help out and, and like, you know, what you're doing now is massive for those people who, 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 you know, who public, who privately having those battles and publicly kind of denying them. Um, yeah. And I think more power to you really in order to, you know, to, to, to do that. So any way that, you know, I can help and support link you with anybody, you know, that, that, no, that, thank you. Thing, I, you know, I, I, it was, it was never a, a goal of mine. <laughs> No, it is. But sometimes goal. you, but sometimes you kind of stumble into that kind of, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. I'm more than happy to say, look, you know, hey, don't really be shy from it or worry. You know, you're not alone. Definitely not alone. That's what a lot of people think. Oh, I thought I was the only one who did this. And no, no, you're not. And uh, you can stop. Everyone can change. You can change yeah. your behaviour. And, uh, you know, it's, there's only positives. There's only positives with it, right? You're not going to lose your friends. Actually, you're going to mm. have better relationships with your friends. Them. Yeah. Um, and you'll save, you could potentially save your life. Yeah, hundred percent. You, hundred percent. You, you would actually, yeah, you will. Because I, I you know, I, as you get older, you feel it. The hangovers are longer, and uh, you're not young. You're not in your twenties where you can go to a gig and come back in college the next day. And you're all right, you know. Um, it's not like that as you get older. And you know, remember, do you remember when you're kids and you used to see an uncle and he'd be, he'd be drunk and you think, God, we are the uncles. I'm yeah. 45 years old, right? And when kids look at me younger in their 20s, I look like an older person. So, you know, I am that old drunk guy. If, you know, so I didn't want to be that. I didn't want to be that boy, the guy in the bar saying, you know what? Telling some young kids, yeah, back in the day, I used to be on Z Music. <laughs> <laughs> What's Z Music? <laughs> yeah. All right. The best, best. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you kind of the final pick then, and then oh, I've really enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed this conversation. Um, Thank you. So it's called it, it's it's called the bandwagon. There's um, this is the opportunity really. If you've got anything off your chest or um, that you want to speak about, or any bandwagon you want to jump on, this is your this is like an opportunity for you to to talk about it. Yeah. Well, 
okay. Um, like I said, I love a good bandwagon. <laughs> like joining in to things and um, um, I'm a big fan of cancel culture. Let's let some cancel uh-huh. some singers. <laughs> Last year, I remember they cancelled the last one, and I used to wake up. Who are they going to cancel? Who are they going to cancel today? But anyway, um, no. Look, I've got. I think for people out there, I think it's important to know that you know. Look, do not judge yourselves via other people, mm. right? Do not look at other people um, in gyms or training or music and think, oh, I wish I could do that because a lot of it's fake. I'm telling you, a lot of these fitness guys do not look like that with six pound at six ab, um, six pack abs, uh, 365 days a year. It's no, it's lighting. It's you know, blah, blah, blah. so don't judge yourself on social media against other people. You know, just judge yourself from yourself. Work hard. Just try and make yourself better. You know, and if anyone else got issues with drinking, just drop me a message, Instagram or Facebook. I'm more than happy to give some little bit of advice and uh, you know um, that. But no, I try not to preach too much and just do it via action, um, just to show an example of what, what you can do. Can do. Uh, well, thank you, Ricky. It's been fantastic. It's nice to come on uh, to a proper podcast, mate. Proper <laughs> one. Yeah. No, no, I'm just, just a, I don't know how this is going to look like. I ain't really wearing lipstick. It's some lighting issue that I've got on here. So, he is, um, he is, he, yeah. He's putting it on. He I'll asked me on. if I like the colour. I said, I do, I do. <laughs> No, but, no, no, but uh, like I said, the door is going to be kind of always open for you on here. Um, and anytime, we, you know, we can have a, you know, chats and stuff and help help everybody help this kind of space that everyone's operating to give it more light. And, you know, because we are going to, you, you are going to, we are going to see the same interviews. We are going to see the same people. It's just different conversations at different times. I think it's really important that we, you know, one, we have the right to change our mind and two, the right to have a conversation with somebody to see, you know, the different ways of thinking and people's experiences. I think that's really valuable. And especially some of the episodes that, you know, that you've done with people who I know as well, you know, the way you've done it is fantastic. So, you know, more power to you in that as well, Sat. So I really appreciate well, thank it. Thank you. It's, it's, been, it's been a pleasure, mate. Um, but yeah, uh, you'll have to come on mine and uh, we'll have oh, a chat. Oh, 100%, around. man. 100%. I can, I can, okay. I can change it. All right, bro. Nice one. Yeah. Take care. Bye bye.